you graduate with the advanced dips in naturopathy and nutrition and herbal medicine. I have a specialist qualification in animal dentistry, small animal dentistry and oral surgery, so that's what I spend most of my time doing. Um, a bit of teaching, I do have a dip ed as well. Um, and I do acupuncture, um, people and animals, mostly animals. So cancer is a chronic disease, as Ross said. It's actually um, part of um, a syndrome that creates unhealthiness and it's not, the cancer is not really the diagnosis. You get the cancer because you're unhealthy. So what we do when we're integrative practitioners is we have a little bit more and different toolboxes in our toolkit. Um, so the standard treatment, of course, is surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. But they don't tend to tell you about herbal medicine and nutritional aspects. Even in the cancer ward, the hospital brings in your food and it's jello <laughs> or jelly, high sugar, sugar tea, and white bread and pasta and you know, sugar, sugar, sugar. So sugar feeds cancer, so you know that. So this is where our shop used to be, and Kevin Rudd was our local guy before he became Prime Minister. And, as Ross said, there is no cure for cancer, there never will be. There's cures for people that have cancer. So the people is the package that you have to treat, not the cancer. So we all, we're on the same page, all of us. And there's a whole bunch of research, including um, looking at various genetic markers, and we've talked about that, and obesity is a really big one. Lack of exercise is also a big positive factor. I have many um, dog patients mostly that have cancer and some, you know, they're usually gone to the oncologist if they go to the specialist route and they're told, oh, six to eight weeks, maybe three months. But those ones in a happy household when we change the diet and they exercise a lot, we're like three years later and we're like, oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we're just gonna, this is a lecture I taught people. So um, there are some trace vitamins, so vitamin, vital minerals, they used to think all vitamins were minerals. Um, and you can see things on people and also pets in the distribution of where problems are. So this is what a patient eating mostly maize and corn can look like. Maize and corn actually um, leaches out and binds to your vitamin B3 and so you, this is where the sun is hitting and any of the curved parts that become a bit sort of eczematous, so we see that in dogs as well, atopy around the cracks of where things are and oddly enough that's also how you treat atopy, you use acupuncture in the folds, so large intestine 11. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, the blood is, a, is pooling there and it's not moving. So in Chinese medicine, they don't have the word for cancer. It's actually stasis. The word they use is stasis. So you can see how that's stasis. Yes. And B3, which is niacin, moves stuff. So if you overdose on niacin, you actually get a facial flush. You get a red face. Yes. And heightened. Yes. And right, right. Mm -hmm. So it helps with moving stasis. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Another really big thing that we see a lot of periodontal disease, so you can almost smell that from here. It's pus, you know, and the teeth are loose. And so if you've got a really manky, horrible mouth, your whole body is going to be inflamed and infected. So you've got to pay attention to oral hygiene. And, you know, that might mean teaching your kids to learn to brush their teeth and also pay attention to what they're brushing it with. Um, in humans, we do this, um, put a tablespoon of coconut oil in your mouth and walk around for 20 minutes and go, yes, so, yes, so oil pulling, it's called, and a lot of the bacteria around the teeth will get squished through and then you spit it out, you don't swallow it, you spit it out. So sometimes I'll do that in the morning and drive to work and I'm just going, the whole time, yeah, but that can help. But the other thing is to look. So you kind of do need a dentist, but I usually tell them I don't want the fluoride application when you finish doing the scale and the polishing um, because the stuff they use is actually a little bit toxic. So a lot of the time with, with our pets that come in, the owner had no idea and hasn't actually looked inside. So there was an oral melanoma 
inside. So if you don't look, you don't find. Any amount of vitamins and supplements are not going to balance an unbalanced diet. So, you know, you can't just take supplements and fix it. You need to actually look at stuff. Oh, so this particular case, this was a Great Dane that um, had blood in the urine and the specialist had identified a faulty part, or they thought they had, um, of the way that a renal blood vessel had not formed properly and one of the kidneys was leaching out blood. So we use the Chinese herb called Yunnan Bio, which stops bleeding. I mean, herbs are just amazing because they do so many different things. Okay, I'm going to pass that around so you can have a look at it. Yeah. So this is a compound that we use for hemorrhage, and it helps the blood vessels, I'm just going to say, do the right thing. <laughs> and so we put that dog on that, and he no longer bled. He didn't have to have his kidney out, which was what they were going to do. They were going to take the kidney out. So we just put it on Unibio. Yeah. So again, we look at specific organ support. So speaking about cancer, if you've got cancer in the liver, there are particular herbs that you probably should take to make your liver become normal again. If you've got pancreatitis with a pancreas problem, and this is a hard cancer to treat, I have treated with you, you want to use guava leaf and gymnema. If you've got prostate cancer, you look at other things, I mean this is not the whole story, but these are some of the herbs that we would just add for particular types of cancer. And kidney function, this is a really big one. We use Romani glutinosa, this reverses kidney failure. I have hundreds of patients over many years that were diagnosed with renal failure that we've put on Chinese herbs. <laughs> this is one of our owners that has gone this route. And they, they're reversed. We had a cat that's now I think it's 18 and a half, almost 19, came in the other day for some more acupuncture. They moved from Taiwan. It had been diagnosed 15 years before when it came over with renal failure. We put it on Liu Wei Di Huang Wan. Liu means six, so Romania six. And it's high in um, this particular herb. You can Google it on PubMed. And there are articles that show it reverses renal failure. And you would think that all doctors would know this, and you would think that all kidney specialists would know this, or renal specialists would know that. You would think that all vets that treat cats would know that, because cats die of renal failure. And I keep posting it on Facebook, and they're still in denial. <laughs> so we've got to get the message out, guys. Like, yes. it's really important. So what is wrong with this picture? So the mother takes the baby to the doctor, and the doctor says, be sure to feed your child exclusively this scientifically, completely balanced food every meal for its whole life. And the mother says, is he nuts? No way am I not going to give my child a variety of fresh fruits, right? Like, what mother would just feed Nutri-Grain every meal all the time? Then Mrs. Jones goes to the vet. The vet looks the same as the other doctor. Please be sure to feed your pet exclusively this scientifically, complete, balanced food every meal for the rest of its life. Isn't science wonderful? <laughs> what is wrong with this picture? So the big thing that we do with all of our, all patients, all human and pets and dogs and cats, is we try and get the diet a bit better. <laughs> and you don't just feed, and I won't name the name, the science diet. <laughs> so why don't we just feed the science diet? So when you look at labels and the problem with the pet food industry, they don't have to put it on the label. They don't have to put BHT, BHA, artificial colorings. It, it's not on the labels. It doesn't have to. And it can be put on at various stages of manufacturing. So, yeah, it's pretty sad. So what's in there? Lubricants. You'll see sometimes a glycol added, a propylene glycol, causes kidney damage. Yeah. Sucks, right? It's in a lot of food, actually. Um, and the other problem, oh, so I do recommend this book, The Forever Dog, by Karen Becker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's great, and it'll go into great detail and in so many of the things that we've talked about. But the big thing is the heat treating. <coughs> when you cook a starch, which is basically a sugar, any starch, doesn't matter which starch it is, and you cook it, in pet food it's like four times, so it, it's the, the product is rendered, which heat treated, 
and then it goes through another process and then another process and another process till it's all extruded out and it comes down to a pellet that's shelf stable for a year or two. Every time you heat the starches with the proteins, you get advanced glycation end products or ages, and that is what they do. They age you if you eat it, right? And acrylamides are known to cause cancer. So heat treating at a high temperature creates this problem. And sorry, can I interject? In addition, yeah. um, Science Diet, Royal Canin, foods that are imported from America and get exposed to radiation therapy, so it kills everything, any bugs that might come in, and it just, any nutrients in the food, it just wipes out. That's right. That additional yay factor of radiation gets yes, in there. That's so right. It's awful. Exactly. Especially yeah. in Australia where it's imported. Yes. So there was a period where there was a semi moist origin coming over from America and a lot of cats actually became paralyzed. And it was some process that the radiation did to the protein when it came through to the... Our country radiates a higher level than any other country, country. in the world. Yeah. More than New Zealand. Yeah. So the cats, it was, it was a mystery because their origin was imported by a bunch of naturopath vets that wanted the best food and origin looked good on the uh, analysis. So even Barbara Fugere, who's a friend of mine, has a practice in Sydney, her own cat became paralysed. So there was lawsuits, stuff going on. Yes, so, yeah. Um, they do use glyphosate to ripen the wheat um, because when they harvest the wheat, they'll get like a 70% yield and the green um, wheat grain will turn yellow if they spray it with glyphosate because it kind of kills it and then they get a better um, dollar per kilo and that's why they do it. Yeah. So if food was honestly labelled you would have heart disease spread, acrylamide chips, zero nutrition puffs, colon danger dogs, hot dogs, for sure diabetes drinks, obesity pop and ADHD flakes because food is medicine yes. or poison, basically. So, what's for dinner? Fish is good for me. I'll have my microwave with gamma irradiated herbs in a polycarbonate bisphenol A cooking dish, plastic, made from a creamy sauce with margarine, plastic, artificial yellow dyes, and then we're going to have a BST fed cow's milk thickened with omega-3 enhanced eggs from a factory that has arsenic coccidia stats added to the poultry food. Yes. It's another source. Yes. I wanted to tell you that when you yeah. were doing that. Because yes. the eggs and the yolk, the arsenic yeah. in the eggs, goes to dad, has omelettes every day, <laughs> goes to mum, has something else. Yeah. Um, BPA plastics, aspartame, because things go better with, right? Coal tar. Die. <laughs> Aluminum aloe, and then I will have it on a romantic light from compact fluorescent bulbs on the new formaldehyde fire retardant outgassing carpet that I put in. And what does that do to cats? Hyperthyroidism, thyroid cancer. Um, and then I'll walk barefoot on the Monsanto glyphosate roundup yard after I've washed with my triclosan disinfectant on my hands, after I brush my teeth with the fluoride toothpaste, and everything will be okay. Wow. And obviously, there's a really high rate of cancer now. So, food. There was an interesting study um, by this guy, Francis Pottinger. He had 900 cats for 10 years that he studied, so it's a pretty good study. So he fed the cats two-thirds raw meat and one-third raw milk. And many generations, so you get lots of generations because they breed every like three or four times a year, so they have lots of litters, kittens. And those cats were disease-free and healthy. He fed the same food cooked, and after three or four generations, they were infertile. So what's happening when you cook the food? It worked out that the taurine became deficient, so they became blind and infertile. And they're also destroying the enzymes and the vitamins. So, um, Joe Cross did a series on um, drinks, uh, making fresh vegetable juices. He was, he was obese. Not, you know, he, he wasn't morbidly obese, but he was overweight. And he had a chronic skin condition, which 
which was an autoimmune kind of thing. And he was on steroids, cortisone, every day, like 5, 10 milligrams. And he decided that he'd tackle his own health and travel around America. You can find this video, I think, even on YouTube now. It was um, maybe 20 years ago, I want to say. Age is, just keeps yeah. going, time, doesn't it? Um, so he bought a juicer, it was just an ordinary Breville juicer, and he put it in the back of the station wagon and travelled around America and interviewed fat people, <laughs> pretty much, and people that ate at McDonald's every day. Um, it, was a, it was quite an interesting episode, and he lost a lot of weight, and he got healthier, and he had doctors monitor him. So he basically just drank vegetable juices. He made them every day, fresh, and he, that's all he did. And he got healthy. And it wasn't even organic. He got what he could. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he did what he could. You know, and that was 20 years ago, so I think there's more pesticides now, to be honest. It would be better to get spray free in Canada. Anyway, so we talked about how the cats went. They didn't do so great. So, herbs and food, medicine, multiple trace minerals, enzymes, polysaccharides, and food. What causes cancer? We've talked about that. So, we will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, 
Like nobody gets to live forever, right? So you want to prevent the rusting as much as possible. And you do that by avoiding the things that cause the problems um, and then adding the supplements that help you get rid of it. Okay, I'm just going to move through some of this. Okay, so these are some of the supplements that you can do. Now, the big shift for me in understanding carcinogenesis is that it's actually damaged the mitochondria. So mitochondria are your powerhouses of your cell, and they're the ones that make your energy in your cell. And this is where the story of glycolysis and sugar um, causes the rusting. And that's why the ketogenic diet and the high levels of good fat in your diet help in treating cancer. So that's when we look at the diet with dogs, we take them off kibble. Um, and then we make sure the owner is making a bone broth. And then we add the sulforaphane vegetables to that. Sulfur smells, right? So who likes Brussels sprouts? I love Brussels sprouts. Some people don't. But you know that smell that comes from them when you cook them? That's a sulfur smell. That's your indication of sulforaphane. Broccoli is also a good one. And the best source is apparently broccoli sprouts. So you can find broccoli sprouts in your greengrocers. So buy them whenever you see them. Or make your own, which is so easy in Queensland yeah. because we have yeah. some to do it. Yeah, with a little sprouter. There you go. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I'm just making a whole bunch of mung bean sprouts. Where do you buy your broccoli seeds from? I have them in a box in there at home. Mm -hmm. um, did, you, did you buy them from a health food shop? Or no, I got them online, organically. And, and there you go. Just come. Okay. And there's different radish, broccoli. Yes. Okay, good to know. So, I, that's sorry, there's, there's a lady at the moment, there's a lady at the moment um, at the Norley Street Organic Food Markets every Sunday who's selling um, yeah. sprouts. Yeah, she's yeah. got broccoli sprouts. Right. Because yeah. it, it can be a little bit hard to find them. I never get up early enough for Norley Street. But yeah. um, there is a supplement from Christine Norton, and um, we do carry it. A lot of our cancer patients are on that, and it's a powder or a capsule, so it's pre-made. And there's something about Mercerine, so once it's exposed to air and grows into the broccoli, there's less of the, um, the actual sulforaphane that gets absorbed quickly. So that's where one of our PhD naturopath colleagues made a business where she makes this particular supplement. So we do, we do stock that one, and it's pre-made in the capsule or in the powder. Once you open the powder one, I'll put it in the fridge. The capsules, um, because they're encapsulated, don't get exposed to the oxygen from the air, so don't break down. So it's something else to know about. Sulfur is important. So all of the sulfur amino acids actually are helpful. Okay, this is, we don't need to know all of this. But sulfur is a good thing. It reduces inflammation. So inflammation pushes cancer through. Now, there's a really good book. It's by this guy called um, John Burke. It was his PhD, and he published it over 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. And if you go to ompress.com and look for Bowick, um, he talks about various herbal compositions, and it's quite extensive. It's a little bit dated now, but it's still very relevant. Yeah, so B-O-I-K at OnPress, and you can download it um, and just donate some money to him still, and to his cause. So there's, there's many, many um, vegetables and herbs that can be helpful, and um, they have studied particular aspects of these. For instance, um, gobo, which is burdock root, um, they've got like an A to Z of the chemicals that are in burdock root and they've taken apart Arctean, you know, because they're trying to put something in an injectable form or a tablet form. Here I've got Arctigen and anti-cancer, but just eat the root. Like. <laughs> so there's lots of studies about Arctiol and Arctigen and how they are anti-cancer, and that's just for the A bit. So the law of signatures. So things that look like cancer often have good things that will help you treat cancer. We were growing this vegetable, it grows really easily. It's an African horned cucumber. 
there are actually studies online that you can read about it and how it helps um, prevent cancer by inhibiting the growth of free radicals. And that's your law of signatures. Now this one, doesn't that look like a tumour? So this is Noni, and you'll find it when you travel on various islands. And um, they, the Noni fruit, it, it smells like um, athletes' old socks. <laughs> like it's really disgusting. So it starts green, and then it turns yellowy white. And then when you cut the inside, it's kind of purple-ish. Huh. Yeah, um, it has similar products to clove oil for analgesia. So if you're traveling and you've got like a sore tooth, you can pack that, even though it tastes disgusting, into the area that's got periodontitis or a sore, you can put it directly on a cut or any injury. But it's also been studied at the University of Hawaii um, and it has fantastic anti-cancer properties. And that's that law of signature. Doesn't it look like a tumor? Yeah. 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 So I use a lot of ECAC tea. So, um, I'm just going to pass these around. So this is the powder form. So you can open it up and have a sniff and you can taste the powder form. And this is it in a capsule form. And so when we're having some um, difficulties accessing it, we were using one from New Ways, which was a company that's now Modair. Um, and I learned about it many years ago when it was New Ways. And the, the reason that I was really um, impressed with this is I had a client bring in a rat that was more tumor than rat. It had lots of tumors and they were really big. And, and I went, well, we could try this ECF in the Cassie T form. Let's give it, I don't know, how much? One, 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 cap, it was a tablet, one tablet per rat per day and come back in seven days. All the tumors were half size in seven Jeez. days. And, I mean, that's a pretty big dose because I think on the bottle it's like one tablet three times a day for a human and the rat is less than a kilo, right? It was like 300 grams or something. So that was impressive to me. So then I started using that quite a lot. And then I was using it for Medi Herb. And so they call it sheep's oil combination. It's got four herbs in it. Um, sheep's oil, burdock, root, turkey, rhubarb, and slippery on the main herbs. Some formulas of ECAC have a couple of other things added to it, but those four herbs together are really amazing. But you cannot, um, many herbs stop making sheep's oil combination, and then also New Ways got in trouble because somebody said we're treating cancer probably, so they stopped making it, and Adamodeo doesn't have it. So you make it yourself by getting those herbs. That's the book again, with John Bowick, and he does talk about ECAC a bit. And then there's quite a, you know, over the many years I've met many people that have some really good information on um, treating cancer. There's chrisbeatscancer.com, Chris Wark had colon cancer, um, I think it was stage four. He did have the one part of his colon removed that had cancer, but he was told it had already met everywhere. And it's now 15 plus years since he did that. And he declined chemotherapy and just changed his diet to mostly raw, huge raw salads and mostly vegetarian diet. And he does some really good interviews. You'll find him on um, YouTube as well. Yep. Are you talking about Chris Ian Goller? This one. Chris oh, because Goller has that. Um... Ian Goller is a friend as well. And he's oh, selling his property. Because... He's yes, because does he still have it? the Goller Foundation? He's moving. Yeah. He's does he? Yes. But he's moving, so he remarried his second wife, he's a doctor. He's and, the one um, that had the cancer that went he did. through yeah. him. So Ian like, Goller is a veterinarian. And, um, oh, I didn't know he was a veterinarian. Yeah, yeah so he's, we all know him. So, um, so he was also an Olympic athlete, and he was a, a long-distance runner. Yes. And then he had osteosarcoma bone cancer, which is bad news. And most dogs with osteosarcoma have the leg off. By the time you have the leg off, it's already metastasized and you're told you'll maybe get three to six months if you're lucky. Yeah. So this was Ian Goller's story and he went, oh, that's not good enough. And he's a vet, so he's smart and he's going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. He went to India and he, um, and he learned Ayurvedic medicine. Yes. And his wife, yes. who was a vet nurse for him, um, was amazing. She massaged him and they had like four kids or something together. 
And, um, and then he was seriously dying. And another friend of ours, who was more integrated than he was at the time, who has a practice in Melbourne, used to hang out with him a bit. Yeah. And, and so um, she did some things for him, you know, diet and Chinese herbs. She had studied Chinese herbs by then. But he, his liver was full of meds and he was yellow and jaundiced. And she knew somebody in Bali. She sent him, he went to Bali and he came back pink again. Sorry. There's, there's a longer story than that. Yeah. But so the Golo Foundation, yeah. it's not re really that active because of COVID for the last oh, three years. Um, and also he's now, he's 10 years older than I am at least. So he's yeah. 75, 78. Yeah, yeah, so he had his leg chopped off. So he's only got... Oh, one. that happened. Right at the beginning. Uh, no, that happened yes. since I've seen him. He was in kind of walking. No, no, he, he had his osteosarcoma leg amputated when it had osteosarcoma. He's always, for the last 40 years, only had one leg. Oh, well then maybe he came out like, he had one leg. He didn't notice the leg. Yeah, uh, so he wears this really long caftan, so you don't look. Uh, but he's only got one leg. Oh, uh, I didn't know he had, You didn't know. No. He had the leg removed because of osteosarcoma, and it had metastasized into his pelvis, and then through his liver, and then everywhere. And there is an interview, you might find it online, um, where he's got bony <laughs> lumps, Protruding yes, from his right. body, which is the most yeah. insane it is. thing and they're all I've gone. ever seen, and they're all and they're gone. gone. And yeah. a big part of his treatment is meditation. Yes. Because what yes. your body does when you have stress, yes. you drop your immune system and you can't fight cancer. So a lot of the dogs that I've seen that have been amazing and live a really long time, like I had a lymphoma patient, positively identified that it had been biopsied. Again, lymphoma should be treated with chemo, and, and the chemo is only really palliative. You get 12 months, right, yeah. for a dog's lymphoma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that is probably better than anything else that they've got. <coughs> but this dog, I just gave it herbs and some prednisolone cortisone, mm -hmm. and I saw it seven years later, mm -hmm. and I thought, what? What did you do? Did you go to chemo? No, no, we just used all those little blue pills you gave us. And I'm like... What? Wow. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you get these amazing wow. things that happen there. Yeah? Right. So you probably don't. This is a lecture for vets. So food is medicine. So there are stages of cancer growth. And what you want to do is you want to attack each of them. So you can have induction of genetic instability. Again, that's radiation or something that holds it. So try not to do that. And then you get an expression of your abnormal genes. And then you get decreased apoptosis, which is programmed cell death that we talked about. Um, and then the cancer cells induce angiogenesis. They induce more blood vessels to come in and feed it so that they can grow and spread. So you can use particular herbs that will stop that ingress of blood vessels. And then you get invasion into surrounding tissues and met metastases. So that's your aim. So you want to use a diet and herbal remedies that will fight all those stages at different areas. And we do now know that various supplements will help with that. Hoxy formula is similar to Esiac. It has a few more herbs in it. So my go-to is often Esiac to start off with. And I do have another lecture on that. And then we do things with diet. So that is, I think this is on our website, this is a cancer diet. Yeah, it's on our website. So there are other nutrients that you can look into. This was Dr. Red's lecture that we had, and he showed us pictures of the, the mice that had cancer. You can see it there. And then this was after um, 12 days only. See how it responded so quickly with his um, purple carrots. So I tell people you need those colors. You need beetroot, you need blueberries, you need purple carrots. That purple carrots are better than orange carrots. So, and, and you can still buy Dr. Red stuff online. He's done some really good research. So, how do you get your animal to eat and change its diet? You just change it slowly. You mix a little bit on your press and you pat them and put some butter in there. Right, so nature cures. Why is chemo such a bad word? You know what? V. Christian comes from that flower. This is a vinca flower. So some of the actual chemo stuff is herbal medicine. 
So don't be totally afraid of some chemo, but you do have to do your homework. So chemo is highly effective for lymphoma, leukemia, um, and testicular cancer. So it does bother me sometimes when you've got like, you know, naturopath, I'm going to say that, naturopath friends, oh, we're not going to do any chemo, oh, we're not going to do, and I'm like, and some of them die, and I'm like, okay, if you've got a really big tumour, you can have it cut out, and you can do all the herbs, and you can do the diet. So I think sometimes, because they all have such a bad name, that you sort of just, let's not do chemo, but... My son had testicular cancer, and he's five years post now, and the oncologist has declared him NED, so no evidence of disease, and he says he doesn't need to see him again. So we also did all the stuff that we do, intravenous vitamin C, yes. and I, I hooked, I got, my daughter flew down and hooked him up at home, <laughs> and then the local vet, who's actually a friend of mine, um, he needed IV giving sets and things like that, and so... Yeah, lots of support from lots of yes, people. Yes, good. Okay, um, this is a good one. Karika papaya, pawpaw. Yeah, yeah. So I've had a few people that we've helped with their cancer journey. And you just pull all the leaves and the stalks and the green fruit out, chop it all up, boil it up on the stove in a big pot, make it into a tea, store it in the fridge. It actually smells a bit like spinach. Mm -hmm. um, but it does have a slightly bitter taste, but it's free. You know, pretty much yeah. find somebody with a tree and make the pawpaw leaf tea. I actually did that yes. with my dog Solomon, yeah. and I actually um, froze it. Yeah. So then I put it in the fridge and I go. just pull out Let it ready to go. To yeah. In. So it it's can be really effective. I was treating a um, guy that had prostate cancer um, stage four that took him out. And he um, he was not going to stay in the hospital. And um, I made him 20 liters, and all his cancer bio markers for the cancer were 60,000 psi, plus state specific antigen PSA, and um, we got them down to almost within normal. It was like amazing. Yeah. But you have to be dedicated. You know, like my son, he had. Twice a day. Yeah, yeah. My son had all. You know, he had a choice. He can either have this mushroom soup or the rye rax or this or that. Every two hours he had to have something. And well actually what I ended up doing yeah. was actually putting the mushroom soup in with there you the go. fire mix all together. Freezes. That's the easiest way to put it all together. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's the pawpaw. Is that good for um, cancer not coming back as well? So, oh, so okay. once you've had a cancer, cancer. diagnosis, yep. Then you all, you still have to be vigilant. But do you yeah. know what? Pretty as Ross said, everybody's got cancer cells every day. Yeah. So you kind of have to think every day. What am I doing for my body? Is it, you know, is that when you're eating stuff, is it either good for me or is it poison? <laughs> and that's pretty yeah. much how it works. Yeah. So you choose processed food. Oh well, I'm going to have a bit of poison today. Yeah. I'm going to do something else. <laughs> So every time, so every day you can think about it and do stuff. So there's more that you can do. But wait, I'm going, oh, there's a couple of things here. I wish that would work. Yeah, sort of, not really. So petty spirit is a weird, it, all these things just seem to grow around when I need them. Mm -hmm. um, we can walk around the garden when we've finished here and closed. Um, it has a white sap. It's really 100% effective for BCC and SCC in the early stages. That white sap kills skin cancers. Don't lick it or eat it. But if I had a BCC come up here, mum was in the hospital, she had a stroke, my husband had a heart attack and they were in different hospitals and I was really busy and I went, oh crap, I've got a BCC. And I just put it on and it stings a little bit. I did it twice, it just totally went away. So, wow. yeah, and it's easy. Now, wow. that was actually known, so our friend, my best friend at uni days, we. We were in first, so we were at vet school together. So her boyfriend, so this is 1978, so her boyfriend was studying medicine, so I told him about it. He is a dermatologist, and he and some of his colleagues made this really expensive cream, and it was Penny Spridge. Uh, do you remember that I told you? And mum was in the hospital, and she had some um, solar keratoses, and I was like, oh, better um, tell the doctor about that, because it looks like they might be turning. And they were like, oh, no, we can't do anything. You know, she had a stroke, so she was, you know, she wasn't mobile. 
and uh, we have to wait until the dermatologist comes. Oh, who's the dermatologist? Oh, and it was my friend. <laughs> and, and he has to come and look at her because it's her face and blah, blah, blah. And, and, but he's not available. And so I rang him. <laughs> oh, you know! And he was on his yacht. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, my mum had to. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll come and see you tomorrow. And so I, my status at that hospital was <laughs> because I'm not loved with him. And he said, oh, it's just solid keratosis. It'll be fine. That was pretty cool. Cause, wow. Yeah, anyway. Um, there's other things that, that are on here that I wanted to briefly talk about. Gerson Protocol, you can look it up. Budwick, Joanna Budwick was a German doctor and um, she put various protocols together but the big thing takeaway that we use from her is mixing cork cheese or cottage cheese with an omega-3 flax oil or use a combination and then we get the owner to store that in the fridge and put a tablespoon on top of the food. That's the Budwick diet principle. Um, okay, so you will hear from most doctors, I don't know about herb drug interaction, so I don't think you should be taking any herbs while we're doing chemo. Mm -hmm. Most of the studies support Herbs. that it actually helps the chemo. Yeah. And there are lots and lots of studies now that show that. I did want to talk about ECAC. ECAC is Nurse Renee Case's name spelt backwards. Can you see that? That's where the name comes from. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what happened was she was a nurse and she was actually um, looking after a human patient in the hospital she was working at that had a shriveled breast. And she asked her what she was doing. This is in the 1920s. And the lady said she had breast cancer positively confirmed by biopsy. And she, um, she didn't have surgery, um, but she knew some American Indians, the Ojibwe tribe. And they showed her those four herbs to wildcraft and find sheep soil, burdock root, slippery elm, and um, turkey rhubarb, and how to brew them up as a tea and drink that three times a day. And that's all she did. And of course, in those days, there was less BPA and xenoestrogen than chemicals. But anyway, so she learned how to make it. And then the, she asked the doctors, the nurse Reen case asked the doctors if she could make this tea and give it to the patients because she wanted to help them. And they said, oh yeah, it's just herbal tea, yeah, fine. And so all these people came to her house <laughs> and she had this big pots full of Isiac brewing, which is that jar that's going around. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's what they did. They, and she had thousands of people cured. And then they tried to um, close her down. It was, so I actually went to Bracebridge, Ontario many years ago to just have a look and see. Um, and she wasn't being paid for it, but she accepted donations. And then they were they put her in jail for practicing without a license. Oh, wow. But 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 her her patients came and got her out and they had a court case against her. So I did join Young Living Essential Oils years ago and Cliff Winkleman is the man that brought Young Living Essential Oils into Australia to did you meet him? So so I'm in his line, like two down or something. And so he ran a workshop on his farm. So he's out near um, the Woodford, Woodford, yeah, that's what the word I'm trying to say. That's his house. And so he was friends with Bill Cham. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Bill Cham? Yeah. So Bill Cham made this thing called Curiderm, which is 100% successful also for BCCs and SCCs. And um, at the time, Joe Bedelke Peterson was the politician on, and Bill Cham and Joe were friends. And um, the people around King of Roy with the peanut farm, you know, with cancers and stuff. And so um, he was a biochemist and he found this devil's apple, sap from the devil's apple, um, was what the, the Hereford cows, they have the white faces and the pink eyes, and the cows would rub their squamous cell carcinoma eyes against this plant, and he saw the cancers disappear. And he went, what's in the devil's apple? So then he manufactured this thing called Curiderm, and you could buy it for 30 bucks at any chemist. And then the dermatologist got pissed off. And, <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so Bill Cham is now, I, don't know, I would say 80 years old, and he's retired to Vanuatu. So that's my next holiday, if you want to come with me. Mm -hmm. I want to do that. I want to go and visit Bill Cham. So it was TGA approved. It went through phase one to three trials, and it was available at all pharmacies. And then what happened? Well, it's, you can buy it from Vanuatu. Oh, you still can. Yeah, oh, but you have to buy it from Vanuatu. Yeah, it's but not here. Right. No, they, they kicked the it germs out. kicked it out. Yes. But then they made the Petty Spurge one. Isn't it interesting how old I am? I know stuff because I'm so old. <laughs> so anyway, their wow. Curidome treats all that and it treats it 
well. Now, you look at Aldara, for instance, which is a chemo drug. Don't hurt yourself. Do you want me to put it up? You can put it up. Just press the red button there and put it up. I think the cone noses are gone. Yeah, and, and again, just push it again. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, so, Elaine Hollingsworth was an actress and she has had a health spa area and um, she had Aldara for her SCCs on her skin and she got an autoimmune disease and so she's kind of really angry. I don't even know if she's still alive, I think she might be. So she's got a doctorsordangerous.com about Aldara. But you don't need to do that. You can use Kiriderm or you can use the other stuff. We do a lot of Chinese herbs next door and these are known to move and clear heat and stasis. So um, these are some of the cancers that we see and these are some of the herbs that we use to move them and to clean them up. Curminoids in turmeric. This has a lot of research on it. The one thing about turmeric is it needs to be heat treated with the fat and black pepper for it to be active. Otherwise, it kind of stays in your gut and doesn't get absorbed. You can make a paste topically for cancers. When I travel in Indonesia, sometimes I was sitting at a at a breakfast at the hotel and somebody had a scooter accident, which is actually pretty common because. Everyone comes in and doesn't know how to drive, and then their skin, and then there was all this rash and stuff. So the um, waitress in the restaurant went out the back and grated a bunch of turmeric and mixed it with coconut oil and put it yeah. put it on. So they use it as an anti-inflammatory, as an antiseptic, and a whatever. So it's got amazing properties. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, I was going to pass this around. So if you look at the label, and this is one that we use for some cancers. There is a turmeric called Cucurma zeodora, and that is a white turmeric, which is actually more active against cancer than the yellow and the orange turmeric. So you can have a look at the ingredients and take a picture. So in that book, the Boeck book, this is taken directly from that, and he talks about the different um, areas where your um, anti-cancers can help. Emodin is in sheep sorrel, octogenin is in burdock root, that's part of ECF. Um, there's lots and lots of things now. Frankincense is an essential oil. The bosphoric acid, very interesting studies in PubMed about how it helps treat cancer. Um, green tea has this epi, let me see, can I remember? Epi, do you know, catechins. Cat and so you can actually, there is, um, so you don't want caffeine given to your dog or cat. So you can make your green tea, drink that cup, and put the leaves in the pet food, and you still get the catechins. So quite helpful to do that. So we have lots of strategies, and we, these are the different stages of carcinogenesis, and there are different plant medicines that we use for each stage. So that's why food is medicine, and why you feed different things to help it work. We do find coenzyme Q10 really helpful. There was a study with 32 lymph node positive breast cancer human patients, and these patients took um, 90 milligrams or more of coenzyme Q10. Ubiquinone is probably better. Most the ones that took really high doses of coenzyme Q10, five of them were in complete remission. And in a study of that, so you know how. Um, Breast cancer survivors can live reasonably well, but say Olivia Newton John is a good case in point. She lived for many, many years post diagnosis and treatment, but it comes back, so you have to keep taking stuff and looking after it. What else? Angiogenesis. So, other nutrients that help fight inflammation bromelain is in pineapple, pineapple. so having some um, pineapple regularly. Quercetin is in apples and a whole bunch of other vegetables, and it was one that we used a lot in supplements when COVID was around. Quercetin is a fantastic antioxidant to stop that inflammatory reaction. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, which is fish oil generally, also flaxseed oil, and some other ones. Linseed and flaxseed oil does help with the inflammation. And we also have um, methods of stopping the um, local invasion of cancer. So I actually make 
a blend with some DMSO and frankincense and some other essential oils for topical cancers. So this little dog has one of those. <laughs> and so the owner applies it topically. Um, so part of the reason that you do um, find cancer grows is because your immune system isn't working properly. And these are some of the ingredients that help your immune system work better. So mushroom extracts are very helpful. All mushrooms that are culinary mushrooms can be fed to the animals. And we also have a mushroom extract in a formula called Rybrax, which is seven or eight dollars a sachet. And that's one that my, um, my son takes or uh, did take quite regularly. And it's easy to travel with it in your pocket, you know. You want to do something during the day to help your immune system, you could do that. But astragalus and echinacea are two other ones, and again, there comes your ECA. So, vitamin A can be useful, so we talked about a few. There's some really good books that are out there. Um, we do have all of these upstairs in the naturopath clinic. And this one is another case of mine. So he had, uh, his belly was full of uh, cancer, carcinomatosis, and they said, you'll be lucky to live two weeks. Um, his belly was also acidic, and so the mother, the owner of this dog, mother of the owner, um, did all of that, IV occasionally, and he did live, and she made the food. So she had lots of fun. She lived quite a bit longer. So, benzaldehyde. This is vitamin B17, and it's found in um, almond seeds, but also apricot seeds. Kernels, yes. Yeah, apricot so kernels. good for cancer. And it tastes really bitter. So bitter is better when you're fighting cancer. So any vegetables that have that slightly bitter taste, often it's the B17. It's yes. not a toxin, but you will be told it's a toxin. It's actually not. Yes, Your they liver, do. They say that you'll die if you'll eat a lot yeah, of it. Yeah, because it's got cyanide. Like that. Okay, so what happens is your normal cells will um, break it down in your liver to thiocyanate, which is a precursor to vitamin B12, which is cyanocobalamin, which is B12, and benzoic acid, which is an analgesic. But in the cancer cell, because the mitochondria are faulty in cancer cells, the cancer cells break this l mandulonitrile, which is B17. They use sugar to grow cancer cells and it breaks it down to hydrogen cyanide and benzaldehyde, which actually kills the cancer cells. So it's great for metastatic cancer. And so my human patients take seven, chew seven every three or four hours. Yep. Is it illegal in Australia yep. anymore? Probably. Or is it legal? You know, I don't follow that. Oh, um, sorry. So <laughs> well, they made it too. illegal because of that. And it was so stupid. So, you go to the Chinese supermarket, yes, and it's and called what sweet I almond kernels. Kernels, yes. But so it's okay. Still have to do it. Um, so the research was done um, by Kanematsu Sugiura, and he worked at the Memorial Sloan Kettering, is on working with the board of that's MSKI, and so he is a Japanese scientist, and he proved that it stopped metastatic spread, killed metastases. And it was proved his work, for all other reasons, was never faulted. And so they had a press release. He was at the back of the room. And the, at the press release, they said that it didn't work. And he was standing there with his arms like that. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked him, do you, do you believe this, that it works? And he said, I stand. It works. Uh -huh. and yeah. left the room. Anyway, it's quite interesting how you've got the politics with cancer and people don't know what they don't know. So, so what's the bottom one? Oh, another thing I did want to talk about, IV vitamin C. High dose of IV vitamin C is taken up by the cancer cell and is active chemotherapy and it will kill the cancer cells because they see it as sugar and it lyses the cancer cells. Um, there's no, um, yeah, there's a lot of studies on this, but a lot of doctors are reluctant to do that. Um, if you have kidney stones or there's a particular enzyme that they do look for um, that will stop some doctors using it. But overall, we use it a lot in dogs and a little bit in cats. 
um, and we'll use something like one gram per five kilos of body weight. So they come in a 30 gram bottle and 100 mils and we'll put a port in right. and inject it daily for three consecutive days with advanced cancers and then maybe once a week or so, which you can have that done. There's a doctor in West End that does it reasonably well. But it is a little bit expensive and sometimes the veins are not so good. But there's lots of studies on how vitamin C can be helped. Lots and lots and lots. And it also helps detoxify. I think we're getting towards the end of this one. So that's your, there's the word, epigallocatechin gallate. That's the EGC film. Green tea, so you want to do a multi-agent approach. You want to take mushroom extracts and you want some vitamin C IV when, if you've got an active growing one. You want lots of veggie pulp, um, Isiac as a tea and Joanna Budwick. And you're looking for your antioxidants. So um, the goji berry juice, um, the end has the highest oxygen radical absorbing, so goji berries are a really good thing to do, and they're probably better than the other things there. Um, noni, you can see we talked about the noni plant. Purple carrots are better than orange carrots. Cauliflower is not as good as Brussels sprouts, so again I spoke about the sulfur smell. So I tend to go broccoli and Brussels sprouts rather than cauliflower. So it's all about food, nutrition, and getting those trace minerals and the vitamins up. So broccoli is the big one, they're your broccoli sprouts, and the thing is spirulina, and you do want the trace minerals, spirulina and quercetin is in apples, and your active turmeric, both the leaves of turmeric as well, and anything that's got that bright colour, that bright um, red and dark purple colour can be very helpful and there are studies that back this up scientifically. Uh, yeah, B12 deficiency is common. Lycopene is from tomatoes but they have to be cooked. So raw tomatoes are not as good as Italian food. <laughs> so you have to cook it. And also if you're buying tins, again BPA, buy the tomato um, passata in glass Okay. Uh, okay, I think I've covered enough. So we're going to leave it at that. And we'll probably run out.